like the exact opposite in every way of everything that I wanted. No clouds, a lot of wind, cliff. I probably shouldn't stand so close to the cliff when it's this windy. Uh, what's up? Welcome to another uh, stupid cloudless New Mexico day. <sighs> so let's talk about that, shall we? Since I have to deal with this all the time, I figured uh, I would give you guys three tips for dealing with crappy skies, bad skies, cloudless skies, lame cloud skies, anything like that. Just skies that just aren't interesting. So I wonder if, pause it right here, I wonder if you guys can tell what the first tip, if you watch my channel, what the first tip would be given that there are no clouds and it's something that I really love to do. Comment below before I tell you if you know what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's the sun star. That's like my favorite thing ever. So that's my first tip. If you have no clouds or clouds but they're lame and you still have a sun. If you have a sun and a cool subject and a cool landscape, I've got all of those three things. If I don't have any good clouds, then throw a sun star in there. So I have a tutorial. I'm not gonna go over how to do that. It's really simple, but I made a tutorial. You can check that out right here to make a sun star. And uh, that'll go over the settings that you need to do that. But that's tip number one. So tip number two is basically just a composition tip. And that is like, I have this beautiful landscape. So let's go ahead and do a little demo photo. Wow, my mirror lockup is on. I was out doing astrophotography the other night and I had my mirror lockup apparently. All right, so let's say this this is not for a portfolio or anything like that. This is just for demonstration purposes only. So if I take the standard shot and I walk up to here thinking this is a really cool angle and I have the two second timer on, you should also turn that off if you're not doing uh, tripod stuff. All right, so let's let's zoom in a little bit and say I want to get that college, the mountain college in the background there. It looks real pretty. So 2 50th of a second, F8, that doesn't really matter. But there's my image. Normally, that's where the college is nice and lit up. The landscape looks great. But those clouds in the background are complete crap. They're just hazy, blocky, lame clouds. So without doing anything, if I were to change my composition, maybe even do a vertical, aim it down a little bit. We'll do a horizontal same way. So now I'm just gonna cut out most of the sky. And that way the viewer is forced to look at the college and not the crappy sky. And then there's gonna be some stuff here. So I might actually turn that into a 16 by nine a wide shot, that way it lends itself to this composition a little bit better. So another tip, uh, this is kind of a bonus tip, but throw a person in the landscape. So if I were to like have Brittany take a picture of me standing real epically, like right there or something, uh, that will automatically, adding a human element into an image will automatically give the viewers a better connection, a different connection and a connection at all because, oh, there's a person right there. So we did this shot just right over there. And without me in the photo, I, that just would have been boring. But all of a sudden it becomes more of an adventure travel type photo. And it's not as much about the light and composition, which always help, by the way. But you have that human element in there and that really helps. And that distracts you too from the fact that there's zero sky and that'll really help a lot all right so there's not much going on here sun's going down fast it's getting super windy and uh, i think it's dinner time because i'm starving so the last tip that i wanted to go over with you guys is definitely more involved and it's definitely on my computer well it could be on your computer too so let's go home get some dinner have some tea and get into my computer and i will go from there
All right, so let's take a look at this first image. I'm gonna go through two images. So one that has kind of a boring, crappy sky, and then one that has no sky, uh, like no clouds at all. So real quick, before we get into this, I do wanna mention that everything I'm doing, you can do in Photoshop alone. You do not need this, but this is a plugin that I really love to use because it simplifies the process for me and I just really enjoy using it. So I'm gonna show you guys the first thing we need to do is create a background copy or just a copy in general. So I'm gonna hit Control J and then there's my new layer right there. And that's only so you can see the differences uh, from what we're doing in the plugin. So my plugin is called Skylum. It's made by Skylum and it's called Luminar 4. And it has a very, very powerful sky replacement tool. And that's what, it's not gonna be a full tutorial on this, it's just, I'm gonna show you some basic stuff for what I'm doing. But I will do more in-depth tutorials on this in the future because like I said, I do use it a lot and it's really cool. They're not paying me to say that by the way. It's just something I, I really like to use. So the first thing that we want to do is we wanna go down here to the creative palette and we're gonna to go to their sky replacement. So this does an incredible job. If you have stuff, we'll see in the next image how you can have stuff sticking up, but you see I don't have a very easy, even horizon. I have the mountains and in Photoshop you have to mask those out and it takes a bit of a time. But with this, I can just come in here to the sky selection. They already have a decent amount of starter skies that are okay. So this is just one of theirs. I can throw that in, but I'm gonna be using my sky. So that's another thing is I have built my own sky library and I am gonna use some of those. So you can go down here to custom image, load custom image, and right here it pulls up my sky sample pack, which by the way, is for sale as of the time of this video. You can check the link down below to get this if you're interested in adding some more skies to your library and or uh, supporting my channel because uh, that makes a huge difference to me and I really appreciate it. So here is my sky library and this is gonna be, I already know which one I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna choose this Mammatus Storm Clouds one and I actually shot this on the same day that I shot this image. So right away you'll see that I didn't chop out the complete horizon on that. And I did that because it's easier for Skylum to do the right thing if it can see the horizon. So this does have a horizon slider. So I'm just gonna slide that down a little bit until I get where I want it. So right around there looks pretty good. So you'll notice too, maybe you can see on the screen, maybe not, but it looks a little bit grainy and a little bit crushed uh, in terms of colors and, and pixelation and all that. At first I started to freak out about that, but it goes away when you bring it into Photoshop. Well, make sure it does if you're using different sky packs or whatever. Uh, but I was really worried because I was like, I didn't shoot this to be grainy or anything, but that's just, I think that uh, this, this application, this plugin right here, is maybe not uh, showing the full representation of the image. So don't freak out about that. Uh, hit apply before you trash the image and say it's too noisy or whatever. So my favorite thing about this is, uh, aside from how easy it is, is to relight the scene. So I loved the mountains. I love the little college here in the picturesque mountain town. And I love that there was just, this light is real. So the sun was right over here and it was just starting to peek through as the storm moved by and that lit it up. So I can come in here and I can relight this scene and make it more matching. And one of the things that uh, I mentioned and I cut myself off earlier was that I shot this on the same day, but the reason why I'm doing it still on the same day and, and you know putting the same sky in is because this right here, the big cloud formation wasn't over the school directly and there was no way I could get that composition in real life. So I'm able to replace it. It does a really good job. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here to the sun rays and I'm actually going to add a sun. And so this will let me place my sun center and it does a really good job at trying to break through natural pieces of cloud and all of that. Obviously that looks like crap right now, but 
if I drag this over here and I put it somewhere so right around there I think I'm happy with and you can see the light coming down on where the Sun naturally was lighting us up already and then I can bring this up bring up that amount to where it's too ridiculously over the top and I'll bring it back down you can come in here and adjust the number of rays so I can bring it all the way down to just a couple or all the way up to a ridiculous amount and then what I'm gonna do once I am happy with where that light is hitting I'm happy with it right there and then you can adjust how big the Sun is whether it's in frame or out of frame all that kind of stuff which is really fun I'm gonna warm it up just a little bit I'm gonna warm up the rays just a little bit more and then here's the important bit is I'm gonna mask out what I don't want so you can grab the brush tool and then you can come up here to erase and then you can select just like in Photoshop you can select your opacity I'm just gonna leave it at 50 that way I can just slowly do it and I'm gonna erase all of this stuff that's just not necessary for where I want it to show so there we go now I have it kind of really naturally looking like the Sun was just basically shining on that building which it kind of was in real life anyway so that works out pretty well now there's a lot more stuff I can do in Luminar like I said I'm not gonna go into that you can do complete uh, tweaking like in Lightroom you can do all of that stuff so and like I said before if you don't have Lightroom and or Photoshop this is something to consider it does have a lot of drawbacks but it has a lot of advantages too so you can come in here to the landscape editor and I can try messing around with some things so I'm pretty happy with that I'm like I said I'm not gonna do too much to this and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply so there it is depending on what you've done to it how much you've done in Luminar and how powerful your computer is that will take a while that's one of the downsides is Luminar is a bit slow still for stuff like that especially for bringing it back into Photoshop but that's okay I think it's worth the wait for me for sure so you can see the before and the after and that is a huge difference and we can do a lot more to this image uh, but I'm not going to on this you know because this episode's probably already running kind of long and I still have another image to get to and y'all know how I like to talk so we're just gonna leave it at that it looks pretty cool there's the before and after so we took that boring cloud bank and we put some awesomeness in there so let's check out this next image so here is an image that I shot of my son messing around out here in the desert and there is no sky, no clouds whatsoever. So let's go ahead and fix that. I've already made my background copy. So I'm gonna go straight into Luminar. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start out by going into the creative and the sky replacement. And then again, I'm gonna go use my own skies so here they are pulled up a nice thumbnail if you have a different sky pack like if you get mine or if you have a different one and you do this luminar i think they said they don't have thumbnails yet but i think they're working on it so just make sure you come in here and right click and hit view and then you can see in the open dialog box there so then you'll have the preview there so i mean i think a lot of these will probably work pretty decently with this image and there's a lot of tips for let's just grab a couple and try and see what happens there's a lot of tips for picking sky replacements and doing the right thing and you know lighting matching lighting and all of that and again I'm not going to go with that so you'll see that in this image I left some of the mountains and sometimes that it could actually work it's believable that there could be mountains back there but I'm just gonna drop the horizon that was a little much it's a little luminar is a little bit clunky with its uh, playback speed at least on my laptop so I'm doing this on my laptop so that looks pretty decent and again you can take this relight scene 
and it does an incredible job at matching and I think somewhere around there just looks fantastic and there's a lot more still that I could do to this but let's try a different one so I'll go back here and load images let's do let's try one of these crazy normally you'd want to pick a like a vertical for a vertical or just a really big image because unfortunately you can't move it around by yourself you can only adjust the horizon position but this lenticular I shot was a pano so it should be pretty good for resolution so it'll leave the settings at what you did last if you bring in a sky so you might have to replace that a little bit that actually looks pretty cool so again I can relight and make that match and then I could do a whole bunch of other stuff that one looks really cool really alien stormy looking those lenticular clouds are so cool let's try a crazy fiery sunset so here's a good example of like how pixelated that looks and I'm fairly confident that that's just in Luminar's uh, showing of it I, I don't think it's doing a very good job at displaying the entire thing properly so you can see if I don't relight it then it, it's not matched at all but if I slide this up somewhere around there I think that's looking really cool and then I could even drop that horizon just a little more because you see this little white here where it was overexposed that is looking pretty cool so if I just go in here and I click export we should see this clean itself up and we should see the higher resolution version of it in Photoshop yeah that cleaned up really nice that looks really good there's a little bit of an issue right there and rather than try to fix it I'm just gonna crop it out also I'll bring this into a Instagram friendly uh, ratio there I think that looks pretty impressive and you can see with the subject there if I zoom in super much super a lot <laughs> if I zoom in a lot and you can see how his hair is blowing a little bit it did a really good job that's really impressive uh, around the foot you know at around all of these rocks the trees even so if you zoom in a lot we're at almost 100% here 66% you will see some issues there sometimes uh, but if I zoom back out that is pretty noticeable huh so I would take a little bit of fixing but you can refine that either in here or in Luminar and clean it up like I said this isn't going to be a full tutorial on how to make the image or fix the image or anything like that I just wanted to showcase some sky replacements and showcase my own skies uh, in a shameless plug because uh, like I said before it really helps my channel and it really helps pay for all the food that he constantly eats nothing better than tea and birds in the morning I put an orange over there the other day, yesterday, because I heard some Bullock's Orioles flying back and forth. So that's what this is for. I'm just gonna set that right there, just in case they decide to show up. So obviously yesterday I didn't go out to do any serious photography. I basically just went out to start the video and uh, I figured that, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate, very lucky that I live in a place like this where there's virtually no cases right now in my area and uh, I have plenty of safe places to escape and go hike around and all that. So I figure it was just a good excuse to just get out, take you guys with me, put the drone up and uh, show you some more interesting landscape stuff and some more of my favorite area here here in uh, southwest New Mexico but like I said in the video I do have to deal with uh, boring skies no there's no clouds again 
zero clouds in the sky today. Uh, so I deal with that kind of stuff a lot. And if I didn't say this in the video before, uh, I think I did, but if I didn't, then this isn't sponsored. The Skyrim is not paying me to say this uh, at all. It's just something that I use and I've been using a lot lately. And I think especially right now, it's super important to stay creative. And if you can't go out, this is a really fun way to look through some of your old images and stuff like that and just piddle with them and see, you know, if there's things you can change or, you know, just, just stay creative. And then of course, you know, throwing in those couple tips in the beginning, those are just some good composition techniques and in the field techniques to think about uh, when you're dealing with skies that are pretty lame because a lot of times you go places and you don't have a choice. You can't come back and wait for an epic sunset or a beautiful sunrise or dramatic storm or anything like that. So, you know, try to make the best of it while you're out there. And uh, if you just happen to get stuck with dreary skies like this, then you should definitely think about uh, what you can do in post because I always shoot like that. I always shoot in the field going into it thinking, what can I do to this in post, knowing my limits and knowing what I have that might help me get the shot that I'm looking for. And like I said too, uh, Luminar is a standalone product. I haven't really used it as a standalone product because I think personally it works a lot better in Photoshop. But if you don't have Photoshop, then it definitely works as a Lightroom and Photoshop uh, replacement. Of course, it can't do everything that Lightroom and Photoshop does, but it does enough to take you from start to finish with an image that if you don't have uh, Lightroom or Photoshop or some other photo editor, then it's a good start. And I think it's like 80 bucks maybe, uh, but it's a one-time buy, so that's really cool. All right, well, I'm going to wrap it up here and get back to my backyard birding and uh, start thinking about second breakfast because it's definitely that time. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions about anything that I went over or didn't go over concerning the uh, composition tips out in the camera and all that stuff or the luminar or the photoshop leave those down below and you know i'll answer them definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel i have got new videos every week hit that like button if this video helped you out thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one